All right. Praise the Lord. Blessed morning, everyone. It's time for our spiritual meal. And with that, we want to just make sure that it's God doing the work. So, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I just thank you and praise you this morning, Lord. You are good and your word is perfect. It does everything it needs to do to transform us from the inside out. And with this word today, Lord, I thank you for the privilege of being here to give your word. I pray that you speak through me. Let me not lean on my own understanding. Make sure that we all, all of us, including myself, get what we need to, uh, to grow in you, to get to know you better, and to know who we are. So I give this time to you and everyone who listens now in the future in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> All right. We ready to go? Praise the Lord. Here we go then. Today's word. It's a familiar parable for most of us, if not all of us. But this is our opening verses today. Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. Again, this is a word for us. For such a time as this. Amen? Amen. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, no, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, you, for you know neither the day nor the hour with which the Son of Man is coming. Amen? Amen? This is a very important thing for us to understand today. A word for us today. Ready or not, here he comes. Amen? Amen. We've been hearing all this word. The, the, the Sabbath message just wrapped up an entire uh, running through the Re book of Revelation in the last days. Bible studies, conversations. There's been a lot of talk about the end times and we talk about always eagerly waiting for him to come a second time the revelation of jesus christ that he's he's coming and the blessing is coming the marriage right to be a spiritual father or mother is to be one like a husband and a wife with he who was from the beginning which is jesus christ everything has been talking about this we must be close would you say amen, amen. So if we're close, then this is very applicable to us today. Amen? Amen? The wedding is coming. Are we ready? It's time to check our lamps. Amen? Praise the Lord. Are we going to be the wise virgins or the foolish virgins? Again, God does everything, but he does it also by teaching us and correcting us and doing whatever we are, we need to do to obey, to come into agreement with his plan. Amen? Without that, we would just do what we wanted to do. So I believe he has a word for us to get us ready for the wedding. Are we ready? Amen. We got our wedding clothes ready? Praise the Lord. No, don't stress out. I know it's hot. We don't have to wear wedding clothes today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. Here we go. Let's get, let's hear from the Lord about what he wants. First of all, God's love is the light. We're talking about the lamp and the oil and the light burning brightly, right? Now, you may say, well, Jesus is the light, right? Because he says, I'm the light of the world. But Jesus is God and God is love. And what, what do people see? How do we shine God's light? Is by showing his love. Amen? Amen. People look at everyone, but they notice somebody who doesn't slander someone else, who doesn't fight back who just walks in peace and love, that's the light that attracts people to God. 
So God's love is the light, the oil in our lamps that we need to have full of that oil for burning his light, showing his love when he comes. Amen? Well, our lights, our lamps need to be burning bright. We need plenty of oil. And we know the spirit, right? Is love, joy. Well, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, and so forth. And love is the answer to all of that. So hopefully we got that, right? We know that Really, we need to be walking in love when he comes. That's what he's telling us in that parable. But let's dig a little deeper. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love. Amen? Amen. As Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Amen? But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which is basically raunchy jokes and things, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Amen? Let no one deceive you with empty words, because for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the world. There it is, right? Walk as children of light. Praise the Lord. He's telling us this is our role. This is what he's looking for, what he's prepared us for, for such a time as this. Amen? Amen. Now, we had five foolish virgins. Now, remember, the virgins are believers. You're not a virgin spiritually unless you're a believer. You're born again, right? So the foolish ones, they didn't have enough oil. Their light was going out. And we don't want our light to go out. Amen? Amen. Matthew chapter 24, verses 12 and 13. Jesus said, And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Do we see how this uh, uh, equates to the lamp? It says, Because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Is this talking about the world? Is this talking about other people besides us? When it says, when he says the love of many will grow cold? Well, let's look at that word. The love of many will grow cold and look at it in the Hebrew. And what does it say? What kind of love is that? Agape, Agape love, right? And if it's agape love, is that of the world or is that from God? So when we see him say the love, the agape of many will grow cold, he's saying it is possible for our lamps to grow cold. Amen? Amen. That we don't have enough oil in our lamps and we're not shining his love, not this filio eros stuff from the world, but his unconditional love is what he's looking for, and he's saying that it can grow cold. Amen? This is serious. This is serious. This is what he's looking for from us. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Beware of the slow fade. As a matter of fact, I'll play this song from Casting Crowns later. Uh, and if you're online, I can't play it online because uh, copyright infringement, but you can look it up. Uh, slow fade from Casting Crowns. They got the lyrics there, too. Beware of the slow fade. And so here we are. We're serving God. We, we've been walking with God. Our lamps are burning bright. We're on fire for God. But then all of a sudden, it's possible that that, start, that lamp starts to dim a little. We've seen people who have left. And they be, all of a sudden, they were on fire for God. And, and now it seems as if they were never walking with God before. Amen? And we don't want that to happen to us either. Amen? <laughs> 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 4. For it was so when Solomon was old. Now, King Solomon was the wisest man of his time. He was the richest and so forth. 
he had all these great books of the written the uh, the proverbs that we're studying on Friday nights and the book of Ecclesiastes. He was the son of David. He had was a king. I mean, he was a big time king. Everything serving God. Uh, but when Solomon was old, that his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not loyal to the Lord, as was the heart of his father David. Amen? His lamp, his love for God, his walk with God faded away, and it was an example for us to understand that that's, that can happen. Amen? Amen. But... He started really well, as I already mentioned, right? I mean, look at, at verses 5 through 13 of 1 Kings 3. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, ask, what shall I give you? He's a new believer. He's just fresh. He's just, he's in, a, in awe of God, and he wants to serve God and do the right thing. And Solomon said, you've shown great mercy to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in truth and righteousness and upright of heart, uprightness of heart with you. Solomon has understanding of the of God and, and obviously a reverence for God right here. You have continued this great kindness for him, and you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day, nice and humble. Now, O oh Lord my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David, but I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? Amen. Is this not a man of God, like something, you know, you're, you just want to serve God, you want to do the right thing, you're on fire, all you want to do is God's will, right? Amen. This speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing, and then God said to him, because you've asked this thing and have not asked long life for yourself, nor asked riches for yourself, or have asked the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice. Behold, I have done according to your word. He asked for what God wanted him to have. See, I've given you a wise and understanding heart so that there has not been anyone like you before you, nor shall any like you arise after you. Wow. And I've also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be anyone like you among the kings all your days. Amen? Amen. But look what happened. We already know. We read at the end... It was gone. The lamp and his, his, the oil in his lamp was gone, and he was not on fire for God anymore. He was, he got influenced by all these wives. He uh, he li listened to his flesh, right, and he just right. did what he wanted to do, and uh, gathered money and gathered all these things and listened to his, and he got all those wives, and they introduced him to things that were not of God. And over time, it had an effect on him. Do you think that one day he just said, no, I'm going to deny God and do this? No, it's a slow fade, amen? amen? It's a thing that happens over time when we mix. And it doesn't just have to be wives, amen, or husband. When we mix, when we're starting to mix the world or people into our walk with God that are not part of what God is doing. Amen? Amen. Uh, other influences include, like 2 Corinthians, the most obvious, right? This is the most obvious. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 through 18. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. So that's people who are just totally denying that God exists, don't believe in Jesus, they're just living in the world. And it's obviously, we don't want to be yoked, we don't want to be walking in stride with them. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. And as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore come out from among them and be separate says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will re receive you. Amen? 
I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. And we see Solomon was a good example. He married all these wives that were not children of God, not, you know, in the, in the physical in that case, right? And they, and they worshiped other gods and he spent enough time with them that before he even understood it, before he realized it, when he, when he was partaking in what they were parking, taking in, he was slowly fading away from walking with God. Amen? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so there's people that are not, not serving Jesus, not following God right now that we come in contact with. And we may think, well, you know, it's okay. I'm just, you know, hanging out with them a little bit here and a little bit there. It's not, it doesn't happen in a moment. It happens over time. Amen? Amen. And, and it'll catch you if we don't get told by God, hey, wake up. This is what's going on. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord that he does that. Amen? Praise the Lord. But now what about, we talk about unbelievers, that's pretty easy. But what about those, if God has already prepared you, if you're now, you've been mature in Christ, you're now at least a spiritual young man or young woman in the lord right blessed are you young men for you you are strong and you the word abides in you you have overcome the evil one right Amen. all right now we're with other believers but they're they're less mature they're less less farther in the journey amen and so we can easily get caught up into while well, listening to someone on youtube or that may not have what God's given us. Amen? Amen. And or we could be hanging out with people who are believers, but they are not, they don't know God the way we do. Amen? And so, am I telling us, are we supposed to just avoid them all? Well, we're going to get to that in a moment. But we need to be conscious of this. Amen? Amen. Uh, what, what influences are, are being sent into our lives? Amen? Amen. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 6 highlights this okay then the lord said to me in the days of josiah the king have you seen what backsliding israel has done what is backsliding fading away right the lamp is going out the fire for the for the lord and everything we were doing all of a sudden sliding back away away from god she has gone up on every high mountain and under every green tree and there played the harlot. Amen? Amen. Now we've been a church long enough that we understand that trees represent people. Amen? And a green tree is a young tree. And I can highlight that right here in Leviticus chapter 19, 23. It says, when you come into the land you, and have planted all kinds of trees for food, then you shall count their fruit as uncircumcised Three years it shall be uncircumcised to you. It shall not be eaten. What is he saying spiritually? Not about planting trees and, and eating that fruit. It's about spiritually. You can have young believers who definitely, they know something about God. Blessed are you children for you've known him. You've known the father. They know God exists. They're on fire, but they don't have the understanding. They still need milk. And so if we're eating from a green tree, if we're listening to what they have to say, we're listening to someone who doesn't have the experience, who hasn't been through the fire, a man who hasn't been shaped and molded by God. And we can be influenced and actually kind of get confused and draw away. Do we see that? Amen. 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 So this is this is a. This is a, a God really put this on me. Like I said, that I've actually experienced this. I'm not saying this word, but this is something for me that God's been teaching me how easy it is to get caught like this. Amen? Amen. Are we okay? Amen. The Lord. All right. Not just people, right? Today, we're in this connected world. We've got not only TV, now we got the internet, we got smartphones and social media and all kinds of stuff going on around us. And artificial intelligence, right? People are, I, I heard somebody's pet tablet saying, do you trust in AI? Good for you that you trust in AI. The, <laughs> the computer was talking to that person. So anyway, it's, uh, yeah, that's a good example. Amen. But it says, for the wisdom, 1 Corinthians 3, 19a says, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. There's lots of theories. There's lots of 
uh, 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 recommendations for life and how to get through life and how to make it in this world and how to do all that stuff. It's garbage. And the more we feed on that stuff, the more it will pull us away from the truth. Amen. Amen. And then it'll take that oil out of our lamps. This is real. This is what God has told me to share. It, it can happen to any one of us. Amen. So that now we have this question. And we are believers and God wants us to minister to others, right? That's the lost or even young believers. Whatever the case, we are not, uh, he, we're in the world, but not of the world. So how do we put this together? We are. We need to be able, like like Sister uh, Joanna at work, she has people coming past her all day long. She's going to see them, and God will use her to minister to those people as they come through. So number one, she knows who she is. And number two, if if we get, we ask God and he shows us that anyone outside of, uh, uh, anyone is having an, an influence on us because we are talking to them or watching what they watch or whatever the case, he still expects us to be out there. Jesus was hanging out with the prostitutes and the tax collectors. So he knows we will, we will be, we will, we will be exposed to things that are not of God as we minister. Amen. Mm -hmm. So I don't, what do we do in that case? Do we just keep doing it and just think everything's going to be fine? Or do we understand that when we go in this world, we're going to get spotted. Amen. We're going to, we're going to see things. We're going to hear things that aren't of God. And what we need to do, Jesus gave us an example in John 13, verses 10 through 15. Jesus said to him, he who is bathed, we are spiritually washed, amen, needs only to wash his feet. As we walk spiritually in this world, we're going to get some spots. We're going to hear things and see things that are not of God, that could cause us to go astray if we left them on there. Right, It's easy to wash a little bit of dust off your feet, but if you keep walking in the dirt and walking in the dirt, pretty soon it takes on and it gets to be heavy and you're, you're covered in dirt and then you're you're done, right? And the same thing with this the oil in our lamp and shining God's love. We will see things, we will experience things, we will hear things that can have an effect on us. And the first thing we need to do is have our feet washed, amen? amen. Immediately. Right away, this is what keeps our fire going. Amen? What is that? He who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean, and you are clean, but not all of you. We know that's, he knew who would betray him, therefore he said, you're not all clean. Well, when he had washed their feet, taken his garments, and sat down again, he said to them, do you know what I've done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Amen? For I have given you an example that you should do as I've done to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Does that mean I want you all to wash my feet? No. What it means is it's a spiritual meaning. We've, we've experienced things. We've seen things. And we know we need cleansing. I hope we know when we hear this word, we need cleansing, so we need to get prayer. Amen? Amen? This is what we do for one another. Washing each other's feet is praying over one another to get that spiritual stuff off of us. Amen? Amen. So that our light can still continues to shine brightly. How long would it take for the splatter of mud on a lamp that it would all of a sudden lose its light completely, right? Right. But if you splatter it once and you wipe it off, it's clean again and it's bright again. Amen? Amen. Are we okay with this word? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. We are what we eat. What we eat. Amen. We heard this saying all over the place, but it applies spiritually to each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. We are what we eat, what we consume, right? Look at Jesus, uh, Genesis chapter 3, verses 6 and 7. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. What do we know is the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? It's the law. Amen? I'm gonna, I don't want to put anybody on the spot. The law is how we know what's good and evil. And so when, when, when we're hearing this story about eating the fruit of that tree, it's consuming the law. And once they 
eight of the law, they knew they were naked. They didn't know because they didn't read it before. So what we consume with our eyes, with our ears, is what we eat. Amen? That's the point here. Okay? So she she saw that it was good for and she ate of it. And of course, she also gave it to her husband with her, and he ate of it. And think of it also like this. Let me go to verse 7. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew they were naked, and that they were naked, and that they, they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Amen? So they ate of it. We consume all these things around us, and they come into us. And we want to understand that as we go forward, because we can have either a healthy or an unhealthy diet of what we're consuming. Amen? Amen. Matthew chapter 6, verse 22 and 23, Jesus said, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. Do we see how all this comes together? Amen. Right? If we're consuming things that are not of God, well, if we are consuming the things of God, like the word and so forth, right? If we're consuming good things, it's like the lamp. And our lamp is bright and shiny. Amen? But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. Think about that lamp again. Think about that lamp again. If your eye or your ears is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. And what with the beginning of our sermon, God wants our lamp burning bright. Amen? Amen. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Amen? Amen. Do we want to be those foolish virgins with no light anymore when he shows up? I don't think so. Amen? And we know it's coming. We know he's coming. So, consuming this world, right? 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. Do not love the world or the things in the world. That's the system of this world, the entertainment of this world, all the things that go on around here. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Amen? That's darkness. If our eye is bad, we consume all this darkness, and then it turns off the light in us. And again, it's not one time. It's like, just like when they ate of the tree. Hey, I'm not dead. I'm fine. No, no, no. We may look at something and say, oh, well, that wasn't that bad. I'm still fine. I'm still a Christian. So I can keep doing that, and I can do this, and I can do these things that God would not rather us not do, and then slowly but surely, that lamp begins to dim, but it's so slow, we don't even recognize it. Amen? But if we ask God, he'll tell us, I promise you, if we want to know, God will tell us. Amen? Amen. Are we okay? Amen. But when we consume God's light, ah, that's adding oil to our lamps. Amen? Psalm 119, 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Amen? When we're in the world, word and we get that word, all of a sudden, we just feel that extra sense of spiritual energy. We're on, we feel the fire and our light, lamp burst, uh, burns a little brighter, right? We had last week, had this little light of mine, right? We're going to have that light burning in us. But the, the spirit is willing and the flesh is weak. We can try to force ourselves to read the word and so forth. And, and we get exhausted. We get tired. We get distracted. But what did he tell them when he said the, the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak? He said, pray. Okay, Lord, I hear this. I know that I need to be in your word, but my body is telling me no. It's always having me somewhere else. Pray. You pray God's will, which is him to be, for us to be in his, your, his word. And guess what he's going to do? He's going to make it happen. Amen? There is free will for us. We want your lamp to shine brightly. You ask him and he'll cause your lamp to shine brightly. Guaranteed. Amen? Amen? He will never fail anyone who wants to do his will. And we know he wants our lamps shining brightly. Amen? Amen. Oh, now, I, I don't know about you, but this is, this is big for me. 
John chapter 6, verse 57, as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. There's that eating, that consuming, right? We can look at the law and it brings death, turns that lamp out, right? So, and trying to be somebody and do something and all that. But no, it's about pursuing him, getting to know him, listening for his voice, Spending time with him, all those things are what cause our lamp to burn brightly. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. And we don't have to do it on our own strength because the Israelites tried that and it didn't work. They really wanted to. They had a zeal for God too, but God's got to do it. We need him to do it in us. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Other ways of dimming God's light. I don't know about you. I hope this really is getting our attention today because this is key this is what i feel he wanted us to understand he, all this stuff's going to happen in the world but he's looking for a city on a hill that cannot be hidden burning brightly amen, amen. that's what he's looking for in us we don't have to worry about the economy crashing wars and rumors of wars any of those things he's got us those who abide under the shadow of the almighty We'll see everything happen, but it will not come near us, right? What's our role? Our role is to shine his light in the darkness, amen? amen? Not to conform to the world, not to become a part of the world and end up going that direction, but to be there for others to come to him. He's prepared us for such a time as this. This is our moment, brothers and sisters, amen? So we don't want our lights dimmed down, and here's other ways that our lights get dimmed. Because where does that source of light reside? It resides where? Where is his temple? In our hearts. Amen? Amen. So Hebrews chapter 3, verse 15, while it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Amen? Amen. Now, it's not only a mixing with the world and doing all those things or incorrect doctrine that we've already talked about. The fact is, if you put that lamp in, a, in under a basket, under a hardened heart, how is that love going to shine through? Amen? And what hardens our heart? When we get offended. Uh, we put up walls, right? We get offended. No light shining now. No one's going to see no love. They're going to just see someone defending themselves. Hardness. Amen? But we get wounded, and we don't want to touch that wound. We just want that. We want to protect it so we don't get hurt again. Or unforgiveness to someone else that hardens our heart and causes us to be in darkness. And again, we're supposed to be a lamp of his light. Unconfessed sin goes back to this whole dark getting spots on us. We go and we we do something that was wrong, but we're just, uh, we think, okay, well, I've, I've told God about it. I'm good. And we keep, that piles up and it piles up and that heart gets hard. We know that sin hardens the heart. And guess what? There's no shining lamp. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Are we still confessing and getting prayer? We need to ask ourselves this. We need to ask God to reveal to us. You know, if we're not doing this on a daily basis, every time we know that something is wrong or whatever, whatever the things I just listed or anything else, if we're not being transparent and getting our feet washed, that those layers will continue to build before we know it. We're just walking in darkness. There's no love. There's no light. It's all religion. It's just putting on a front. Amen? Amen. Remember, he is coming soon. Amen? Matthew 24, verses 42 through 51. Jesus said, watch therefore, you, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour that thief would come he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into therefore you also be ready for the son of man is coming at an hour that you do not expect who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season blessed is that servant that food could be just god's love amen that blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying in his coming. I've been waiting. We've been hearing about 
the day of the Lord coming and the fruitfulness and the harvest. But you know what? Ah, it may not. I don't think it's happening. I might as well just live life and do my thing. And begins to beat his fellow servants and eat and drink with the drunkards or do what everybody else is doing. Then the master of that servant will come on a day when he's not looking for him and an hour that he's not aware of. And will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. Hypocrites are like the Pharisees. Amen. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There, let, oh, okay, that was the end of that right there. So this all ties together. We can get comfortable, we can get impatient, or we can just think that it's not happening and just kind of just cruise along, and that will put out our lamps. Amen. If we're not staying connected, if we're not staying in confession, if we're just going through the motions, we become religious and cold and dark. Amen? We don't want him to come when we're in that condition. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12 says, Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. We can think that we're in a good place. And if we're not checking with God, if we're not praying and saying, God, is there anything in me? Is my lamp burning bright? Are people seeing your love in me? If we're just going through the motions, guess what? That's when we're, we're, we're ripe for a fall. It takes the fear of the Lord, humility, and a desire to truly follow God. Amen? So where do we stand today? Let's listen carefully to these examples and see if God speaks to any one of us today. I believe he'll speak to all of us, actually. So here's some examples. Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, that you cannot bear those who are evil. Yeah, that sounds good. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not and found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. We're all here. We're still doing, we're, we're here in the service. We've been going for years now. Everything is great. Nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. You see, if our love for God and our, that's what all the things I've been talking about, if we really, we want his will and his way to please him and to, to live for him, if that love grows cold, then that love grows cold out of us as well. Amen? Amen. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you and quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. There's the lamp. Amen? Amen. Or maybe it's like this. Re Re Revelation 3, verses 14 through 19. Maybe our, our, our love it ha isn't totally gone but maybe it's like this. To the angel of the church of La the Laodiceans, right? These things say the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish, I could wish you were cold or hot. Going through the motions, but our heart's not in it. We're just like, okay, I'm, I'm staying. I'm doing all the things I'm supposed to do, but I'm also kind of on the fence. I'm also doing things that the world does. I'm mixing it all up. I'm not hot nor cold for God. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I'm rich and become wealthy, it's not really about the physical there, and have need, need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich in white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salves so that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, therefore be zealous and repent. Amen? Amen. So either our love could be completely gone, or we're just thinking that everything's okay, so we're not checking with God, we're not asking Him uh, how, we're, how we're doing, is there anything I need to change is there anything i need to confess that's the fear of the lord amen? amen one more example of what not to be probably the worst of them all 
This is something that we never want to hear. Revelation chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. And to the angel of the church in Sardis, these things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Any light going to come from a dead lamp? None. 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 Right? Now we're talking straight up religion. Nothing else. There's no love. There's no heart in it whatsoever. Be watchful and strengthen, strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. Do you see over and over in these verses, he's talking about the day he comes. Amen? Amen. You have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments. I probably took too much of this. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Amen? Amen. So, these are all things that could we could end up hearing if we ask. But we're not supposed to hide from that. We want to know. Amen? He's saying repent. He's giving his people time. But we must be willing to ask him and see, let him look in our hearts and see what's going on to see if our lamps are burning bright or not. Amen? This is what we want to hear. Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 through 12. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write these things. Philadelphia means brotherly love. Amen? Love. These things say he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I've set before you an open door and no one can shut it. For you have little strength, have kept my word and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan. <coughs> Excuse me. I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. That's anybody who's teaching the law because that's what Satan loves. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. Why would they even do that? Because you would be shining the, the beautiful, perfect love of God. That's why they would come. They would come and say, these people are loved by God. Amen. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial. That's the storm Pastor Tyrone shared with us. We shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have that no one may take your crown. Praise the Lord. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him or her my new name. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. That is the church that walks with a, their lamps burning brightly of his love. Amen? I see that wrap this whole thing up. We talked from the beginning about how he was looking at the virgins and five were wise. Their lamps were burning bright. They had plenty of oil. They were shining God's love. And the ones who just thought that, well, you know what? I can get comfortable and I can do these things and I don't need to do all this confessing and I don't need to and, and got comfortable and their lamps were burning out and it was too late when he showed up. Amen? Amen. He is coming at a moment we don't know. Let's wrap it up. Are we okay? Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Let's wrap it up. Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 through 17. In summary of everything we talked about. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. We can get tired of our flesh. Well, I've been doing that, and I've been doing that. I've been learning, and I've been reading, and I've even been preaching, or whatever the case. We can, we've can. we done all that, been there, bought the t-shirt. Seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. We become weary, but God can give us the strength to persevere. 
Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. These things are not profitable. All they do is cover his light and they can all ultimately extinguish it. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Your reward is coming. You're having eternity ahead of you. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are put to put off all these things, anger, wrath, malice, that blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised or nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Amen? And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you also you were called in one body and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. That's how we admonish one another. Amen. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God. And the Father through him. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. That's what he wants for us. That's what he wants. He doesn't expect us to do it on our own strength. But he's given us free will to choose to do this with his help or just do it our way. Amen? Amen. One more thing. Please listen. This is it. Revelation chapter 22, verses 12 through 17. And behold, I am coming quickly. And my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. What did the virgins need to have when he was coming? Oil in their lamps to shine his love. <coughs> I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, which are to love God and love people, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears say, come. And let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word today. Lord, I pray as you've done with me, I thank you. I thank you for opening my eyes to this. No one, as none of us are able to stand on our own. We need you to correct us like this. We need you to show us when we're going astray. We know you're the shepherd and we are the sheep and you will leave the 99 to go get us. But we have to cry out to your name. We have to cry out to you. We have to see it in ourselves. And we need to turn to you. You will bring us back. You will cause us. You'll give us that hunger. You'll give us the fire, the oil. That's what we come and get freely from you, Lord. It is what you want from us. But we, our role like the prodigal son is to turn and come back to you, Lord. We we ask you to make it clear. Give Grant us the gift of repentance and cause us to be burning so bright that it's in 
possible for anyone not see your love in us. Let us be that. We can't be that on our own, Lord. We need your help. But let us let us all see what we need so we can come in agreement and be ready for your coming so that none of us are taken by surprise. We don't ever want to hear that for anyone in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thanks the Lord. For everyone here and for everyone listening and for those who listen in the future, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you all. Amen.